Hey guys, Brian Holder here, Brian Holder Graphic and Web Design. And finally coming off of my uh, year and a half or so hiatus that I've been on and creating a new WYSIWYG Web Builder Design tutorial. And uh, we are into version 10. I believe my last tutorial was probably version 9. That's how long it's been since I've done one. Um, I, re I started a new career in uh, December of 2013 with a new engineering firm. I'm an engineer by trade. Uh, my full-time position is, is, is an engineer, not, um, not design. So uh, I started my new career, got career focused, kind of left off with the WYSIWYG uh, tutorials and, and kind of left my design career behind me. And uh, I'm starting to reignite that a little bit. I want to get back into it. So I'm in the process of building a new website. Here's, uh, here's kind of the basic layout so far. This is going to be the blog, what the blog is going to look like. Um, so there's some things that aren't, aren't quite finished yet. I have a placeholder menu and stuff like that. But the tutorial I want to talk to you today about is um, the light box. And I can see in WYSIWYG 10, there's all kinds of options to use light box. And so what I'm going to do today is take you through my tutorial here for how I'm going to use the light box on, uh, for my contact form. You know, the contact me page has always been a struggle for me because, you know, being a freelancer, I don't technically have an office that I can put a Google map on or anything like that. You know, if I use an address, it's going to be my home address. I don't want people showing up there. I only have one phone number, so really what do I put on a contact page? So with my new design here that I'm laying out, uh, I've decided to just get rid of the contact page altogether. And I'm going to be using a just a light box pop-up contact form for the contact me page. Um, so you'll see it's up here in the menu with my normal stuff, and I also have a link for it up here. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep the link up here or not, but I have it there for now. And basically what happens when somebody clicks on it, I have a pretty simple contact form that just pops up in a light box. And it's just got a form field for the name, email address, uh, the website if they have one. And that thing you just saw pop up here is um, it's called Dashlane. It remembers all of my stuff for me, so all of my passwords. And uh, it has a plug-in here for Google Chrome, which is the browser I'm using. Uh, but it has plugins for every single browser. And uh, it remembers all my personal information, so whenever I come to a common field like email address, it, I can fill it in automatically. Um, and then I also have this. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. I'm going to try it out. Um, but it's just, instead of using a CAPTCHA, I find those to be just uh, gaudy, uh, especially for design. They're very ugly. They usually have some kind of grainy, crummy-looking picture in there with some numbers you got to type in. I'm going to try to make a uh, just a simple thing. This form will not be submitted until this option is selected. Um, and we can go through that, and I'll show you how I program that. Um, but basically, you know, this is it. That's my contact page. That's it. So what I'm going to do is show you how, uh, how I did this in WYSIWYG so you can kind of do some similar things. Um, the cool thing is that the way that this works, you can put anything in this light box. You can put a uh, login, you know, if you're, if you're using the WYSIWYG, um, you know, administration tools for, for users. Uh, that you can put a login page. You can have a, a, e a newsletter opt-in pop up. Um, you know, join my newsletter, click here, they click it, little, little light box pops up with a spot for them to put in their email address. So things of that nature. Um, it can be, it's very versatile, it can be used for anything. In fact, I'm working with a client right now on a web design where we're going to be integrating WHMCS, that is a billing uh, platform for web hosting companies. And it's pretty versatile, so he's going to be using it just for uh, his e-commerce platform. And the reason I recommended WHMCS is because I know how well I can integrate it into a WYSIWYG web builder design uh, using the Lightbox features. So, to get into it, here's the site uh, in WYSIWYG. And I only have a few pages built so far. I don't have too much uh, built just yet. But what we're looking at here is my master frame. And then the contact page looks like this. So the page has been formatted to be uh, 406 pixels wide. And then I have a success page that shows up when the form has been completed. And if there's an error, I have an error page. And it's pretty simple. All we had to do was build this contact form. You can make it whatever size you want. Uh, I do have a transparent background, so you have to kind of look real closely to see this edge to see where it is. Okay. Uh, just edit boxes here for the different fields you want. 
you see how it says full name in there? I don't like to put a, uh, a title next to it or anything. I like to use the box itself. Uh, what you want to do is fill in where it says placeholder. That'll change what it shows in that box. And the, ni the nice thing about that, let's go to preview mode here, is that when the user clicks on that field to fill it in and they start typing, that, that placeholder goes away. So it's real professional. And then with my email address, I'll show you how I programmed in the, uh, the email field because it does some pretty cool stuff to validate that you're using a true email. So if I just put in my name and a website, uh, maybe I didn't program this correctly. Let's take a look. Nope, I did. So it's going to tell me that this isn't a real URL. Please enter a real URL. So it has to have an HTTP on it. Okay. And if I try to send this again like that, please include the ad symbol, so please make sure it's a real email address. And these are pretty simple, um, and this isn't going to submit, obviously, because this is preview mode HTML. There's no PHP behind it. So, to show you how that's programmed, full name, I just have that programmed as a text, and I don't believe there's no validation, no, no constraints, so that way, no matter what kind of name you have, uh, no matter what kind of punctuation you have in your name, uh, it'll be just fine. It'll go through just fine. Email address, however, what you want to do is change this type. Change it to email. You can leave it as text, uh, and it'll work just fine. But when you change it to email, if you ever notice on your mobile phone when you're filling out a form and the keypad changes, sometimes the keypad will have the at symbol there, sometimes it won't. Um, that's because if, if you change the type to email, then that'll tell the keypad... Uh, that hey this is a, this is an email form and it'll come up with the email form um, keypad which will have the at symbol at it and likewise for the URL the website one um, it'll have the dot com button on the keypad so that the user can just hit the dot com button instead of having to type in dot com um, like I said it, it will work if you just leave it on text um, but I like to change it so that my users uh, you know have a good experience when they're trying to fill out my form particularly on a mobile device. So, uh, you know, I went through and I styled this a little bit. Used the, I'm using a Google font, Open Sans. But the biggest point here is that you want to validate. There's a few different modes for validation. Uh, I recommend either InfoBubble or HTML5. The reason I went with HTML5 is because the InfoBubble tends to go off to the side a little bit and the, the width of my light box is only so wide and the InfoBubble wouldn't really be visible unless they use the scroll bar to go over. So I went with the HTML5 here. And the data type, you want it to make sure that it's an email address since this is an email field. Okay. And then the error message is automatic. You don't have to program that, which is nice. And then if you want to make sure that that is a required field that they have to fill out, you just tick this box that says required data or data required. And that's it. That was pretty simple for the email address. And then likewise, we'll go through uh, the H this one here. Change it to URL because that's what they're putting in. Okay, and then with validate, just change the uh, data type to URL, make sure it matches. And this is pretty cool too, they have different constraints that you can use for, you know, if somebody's supposed to be putting in American Express card, you can make sure, validate that what they're putting in is an American Express card and not a fake card number, things of that nature. Uh, different date formats, if they're supposed to be putting in a date and you want it in a very specific format, uh, you can choose that and it'll force the user to put it in that format before the form can be submitted. And again, uh, I have this set to HTML5. Okay. Now, down here, uh, comments are just the comments. There's nothing fancy or special. And uh, there's no constraints on those I have. And then with the drop down here, this is just a simple drop down. So, what I do is <clears throat> I, have neither, I have neither of them selected, although the first choice is the one that's selected. And the first choice is I'm a robot. So my theory is that, I'm, and I don't know if this is true or not, so if I'm wrong, please correct me on Twitter, uh, BJ underscore Holder. And uh, my, my theory is that the robot can't switch between the two, um, so it'll try to submit this first value. So what you have to do is switch to this, say I'm not a robot, and then under the validation tab here, it's going to require that the user select one of the two options, and it's not going to allow the user to select the first choice which is I'm a robot. 
So the user has to physically change that to I'm not a robot in order to submit the form. And then if they don't change it, there's a just a pop-up message that comes up that says, so, you're a robot? Um, which I don't care about because, you know, most people aren't going to see that. The only people who are going to see that are robots. And nobody's going to really notice it. And for this one, uh, you can only have the default or the info bubble, so I just stuck with the default, which is a little pop-up box at the end. Okay? So now that we have this form built, now that I, now we've gone through this and, and I've shown you how the form is built, what we're going to do is you want to pay attention to what the size of the um, form is, the contact form size. Okay? So in this case, I'm 408 pixels wide by 606 pixels tall. So now to make this link work, this is a CSS menu that I have this link in. Okay, so we'll go here, and you'll see I just have a have it linked to the page, my contact page in the project here. And then what you want to do is change your target. I think the default is open in the same browser window, and we want to change that to open in a light box. Okay, now it doesn't stop there because when you do that, um, there aren't very good options for size, and and for whatever reason. Uh, with the YouTube video, this is where the lightbox first started getting introduced outside of the, the photo gallery. And when you go to the lightbox in the YouTube video and you say, I want to, that gives you the option to set the width and the height of the, of the lightbox. And for whatever reason, I, I, I'm presuming there must be a reason behind it, but this, this setting is not available in the, uh, the regular link. Uh, hopefully in, in future versions it will be. Um, but for right now, when you when you set a light box, you don't have options for width and height here. So you have to set those manually, and that's what this settings button does. So it's pretty simple. All you got to do is type out the word width, then a colon, and then the width you want the light box to be in pixels. Okay. Uh, do not put the px; just put the number. That's it. And then a comma. And then on the next line. And that's a comma, not a semicolon, but it's a normal comma. And on the next line, you type out height, colon, and then the height in pixels that you want. And again, leave off the, the PX. Uh, after the height, no other punctuation is required. You do not need to use another comma. Okay? Now, what I learned is doing this that you don't want to use the exact dimensions of your form because otherwise scroll bars will show up on it. You want to give a little bit of padding around that page. So as long as you have that page in WYSIWYG, and we'll go take a look at it here, set up to be uh, inside the page properties, go to page properties, right click page properties, and you have this set up to center this page in the browser window horizontally, then you're going to put, all you got to do is just make that a little bit wider and just a little bit taller and that thing will pop right up in the center and it'll look real nice. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at that. So if you remember, I was 408 pixels wide by 606 pixels tall and what I've done is I went 448 so I added 20 pixels of padding on either side of my form and then height was uh, 606 so I went to 632 so I didn't add as much padding for the top and bottom but that's because the page is already up to the top as far as I can go so I only need padding on the bottom so technically I only need 626 pixels and it'll kind of match the sides, but I went with it just a little bit bigger just in case uh, the, you know, the text gets formatted weird on somebody's uh, browser. It gives it a little bit more room for, it to, for the form to grow without having those ugly scroll bars show up. Okay, And that's it. That's all we had to do. And then you can do that inside of a menu. And then right here it's just a regular text box, text link. So control K will bring up the uh, the link. It's the shortcut for it. And it's the exact same thing. We change this uh, this target over to open in a light box. Settings, same settings. Width and the height. And that allows that to pop up inside of that light box. So that kind of concludes this tutorial. Uh, again, like I said, you can build, uh, you know, different light boxes for different things. You could have a contact form right here. You can have an email opt-in. Um, you know, whatever whatever you can think of. Uh, you can have a pop-up box for an audio file. So if, you know, click here to play this file, and a pop-up box pops up with a, uh, you know, with an HTML5 audio link to it, which will play a file. Uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. The world is, uh, the imagination is up to you. All right, so if you like this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel. I got more coming. Uh, like I said, I really want to get back into the swing of doing these tutorials. Um, 
I don't know if they'll be weekly, but uh, possibly every couple of weeks. And uh, like I said, I'm working on this redesign, so as soon as that's ready, I'll publish that URL. Um, the email address I used to publish, I don't really pay attention to. I get a lot of spam and a lot of crap mail on there. So, uh, you know, the best way to, uh, to get a hold of me, I think, is on Twitter. Uh, it's at BJHolder underscore, which is the line at the bottom, underscore. Um, it's BJ underscore Holder. I'm sorry. Man, it's been so long since I used it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like I said, subscribe if you like the video. Got more coming. Uh, I appreciate it, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.